Tremendous here. I got another book review here for you. This one is something else. It's called Patient 3, and it's by a author named Chris Chow. I think I'm saying that right. I apologize if I'm not. Uh, I got it on Kindle Unlimited with my subscription. However, for $2.99, you can own it in ebook format, and for $12.99, you can own it in paperback. It is about 351 pages long. It was published March 11, 2019. And it is in the alien invasion science fiction category, post-apocalyptic, things like that. Very science fiction-y, very alien invasion. This book is very clever. This author is insanely clever. And it's his debut book, too. It's the only one that he's got out. There's nothing else on Amazon or anything. So, yeah, yeah, I'm really hoping, 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 hoping that this guy continues to write books because I really enjoyed this one a lot. I can't say that I loved it, and I'll get to that. Um, But here's the thing. The twist in this book is so un- I it blew me away so hard that I don't want to even hint towards what's going on. So if this non-spoiler section of the review feels a little thin, that's intentional. <laughs> okay? But let me get let me get some of the bad out of the way real quick. This book needs an editor. There are so many run-on sentences and and redundancies in in the first 64 percent of the book that it it actually frustrates the hell out of you it is not an easy read it is not a fun read Uh, a lot of run-on sentences a lot of redundancies if i have to hear about how his fiance is the love of his life more than anything one more time i'm gonna scream it's it's that frustrating and it's strange because it's the when he when he's talking when he when he's narrating as the main character it's in first person and that's really the and and whenever they're talking when they're talking they're a little cardboard a little emotionless but uh when he's when he's talking in those perspectives when he's doing the first person with the main character or there's an actual dialogue going on it's it's not great it's not great at all. It is not well written. But that only happens during those times when he's describing something, when it goes to third person, when it's just plain narration. It's 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 good. So I don't know where the disconnect was. I don't know if maybe something was written and then something was written later and it wasn't proofread. But yeah, yeah, it was it was rough. And I think if an editor gets a hold of this thing and fixes it up. This book would be blown out of the out of the stratosphere five stars. I mean, literally, our solar system might get another star. <laughs> it's just that friggin' good. So the story follows this guy, uh, Michael. He's a 21 year old soldier in the military, and it's in the future. It's not it's not our time frame. And there is a sickness called CN that basically it's a it's a it screws up your mind. I, like I said, I'm really trying not to say too much here. It screws up your mind and kills you in a matter of weeks. Pretty horribly, too. Um, in order to survive it, if you're not a millionaire, there's, a, there's a, a gene therapy you can do if you're a multimillionaire. If you're not, you basically get put into a chemically induced coma where they, let, where they just kind of let you sleep out the rest of your life until they come up with a cure. That that that's your options. So die, coma, be a millionaire. Those are your options on, on how to fix this. Well, needless to say, the soldier doesn't have millions and uh, military medical insurance in the future in this book is not very good. Uh, it doesn't even cover the, the, the coma thing. You're just kind of like, yeah, hurry up and die. So he has to do that. He gets woken up seven years later. There's been an alien invasion. The Earth is basically scorched. Uh, the aliens are just kicking the ever-loving crud out of us. He wakes up, and there's like six other survivors with him, and they have to traverse the, 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 this area in order to get to a safe haven where they can mount a defense type of thing. 
And that's as far as I want to get in the non-spoiler section. I'm going to blow it out of the water in the spoiler section, but I cannot encourage you enough to check this book out, to go and check this book out. If Get it. I don't care what format you get it in. Get it, read it, and then review it because I would you're going to love it. If you like military sci-fi, you got to push through the writing. You got to push through the 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 run-on sentences and the redundancy. It's a small price to pay. It really is. The first 60 to 64% of this book because I was reading it on on uh Kindle, it was difficult. I wasn't enjoying myself. It was there was a lot of things that were happening in that first part of the book where I was like that's garbage. Why would this happen? What's going on? What is the what kind of garbage hole is that? I was ready to give this book a half star review and be done with it. Everything that you run into that that frustrates you like that is intentional by the author. And that's as much as I'm going to give you. It's all intentional. This man is an evil genius. If Mr. Chow is not walking around with a top hat, a monocle, and a black cape, it is a wasted opportunity, and I am ashamed of him because this guy blew me away. When the, when the hammer finally dropped on the twist, and I realized what was going on, and then it went so far as to explain everything, mind blown. Great book, wonderful story. Loved it, loved it. It made everything, it, everything made sense. Now, I don't know if this could have been done in a way where the reader had more of a hint, more of a clue, because I could see people walking away from a story, just being frustrated, not wanting to finish it, not wanting to get to that payoff. Part of me is like, well, screw them. You know, if they don't want to earn it, they don't deserve it. But another part of me is like, well, it's such a great story, though, especially once you realize that everything that you had a complaint about was intentional and good on you for catching it. Like, the author rewards you for catching these things. Every last issue you have, he ties up. And it's, and it's, it's logical, it's intelligent, it's smart, it's just, wow. <laughs> so the only reason, the only reason I will not give this, star, uh, this, this book five stars is because of the run-on sentences and the redundancies. I don't like it. I, I really, really hated that a lot. However, the story and the twist and how it all gets wrapped up and everything Granted, the very end is a little magoo for me. It's a little tiny, tiny bit magoo, but I can forgive that. Uh, it's four and a half stars out of five. I cannot give it a five star until an editor fixes those those uh, the sentence structure. It's just oof. But <laughs> once they do, I'll give it six out of five stars. Once this guy gets an editor on this to fix that, man. <laughs> Don't just take my word for it. Please, I'm begging you, go check out this book. Push through, because once that twist hits, oh, man, did I enjoy that. So I'm going to go ahead and play an ad real quick, the, the spoiler alert, and then I'm going to get into the spoiler section. So if you stick around for that, you're doing yourself a disservice, but buckle up. Everybody knows a self-published author, it's hard to find a solid group where you can get the answers to all your questions. That's when I found self-published book groups. It's a Facebook group, and the link is in the description. Totally worth it. Check it out, especially if you're a self-published author. Spoilers coming up, so if you're still here when the music stops, it's on you. All right, so we're in the spoiler section. You've already heard the warning, and I'm going to say it one more time. This book, the, the, the meat, the payoff, the, the gloriousness of this book is in not knowing what's coming. So if you have any intention, if this is going to ruin it for you, this will ruin it for you. And if you don't care about spoilers or anything like that, listening to this is going to ruin this book for you. So please, please pause it right here and go get the book. Read it. It only takes you a few days, depending on how. It's like 351 pages. You can handle that. And it's, it's a hell of a steal. Go read it first, then come back. And let's have a conversation about this. I want to talk about this book. So please, you don't even have to be nice. You can call me all sorts of names in the comment section go ahead i just want to talk about this book i want to see if the next person that reads it is just as blown away by the twist as i am all right you're still here so i'm gonna assume you read the book or you're a horrible person either way let's do this 
So the story starts off, like I said, this guy, Michael, is a 21-year-old soldier in, in the future world. The world is completely different. Well, not, it's, it's different than what we know it now. They're as close to world pieces as they've ever gotten. They're getting away from fossil fuels. They're, they're doing all renewable energy, all that stuff like that. The military is now like a world police thing. It's really, really dialed back a lot. I mean, yeah, they're still running around, but it's more of like a National Guard type of thing. You know, they go to where uh, natural disasters happen. It's nice to have a response force but for the most part war is gone it's 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 done uh so this guy michael he joined the military because his parents needed him to help make ends meet whatever and uh, while he's on the shooting range he has a seizure his hands all clam up he's all freaking out he gets to the dock and the docks are like Listen, you've got this thing called CN. It's like cerebral neurovarium or something like that. I don't know. It's a big Latin word. It's not Latin. I'm just stupid. <laughs> so basically what it means is he's got this disease that's affecting one out of 50,000 people. And if he doesn't get it treated, it will literally kill him horribly. Now, we're going to put a pin in that because we're going to get to the, the treatment. The one treatment is die. And we'll try to make you as comfortable as we can. Uh, not not your first option, I would hope. The second treatment is going into a medically induced coma, and when you do that, you can uh, they'll they'll keep you asleep until a cure is found, and then they'll wake you up, and you can move on with your life. The third treatment is be a multimillionaire and be able to afford the hundreds of thousands of dollars that it costs every month to get gene therapy. And so, you know, really only celebrities and, and rich people are doing that. And there's reality shows based around all that, uh, which kind of makes this guy sick, which is totally understandable. But he finds out. And then a few like hours later, he's got this fiance and they have to go about like deciding what they're going to do. So they decide with the coma option. And there's three different types of coma options. It's just hey, we'll turn you over a couple of times, make sure your IV line is in, and uh, that's going to be about it. The next one is we'll uh, let you listen to music and TV a few hours every day in case you're you know, hearing it while you're in a coma, which you don't uh, in the book, you, you, nothing. And the third option is the deluxe package where not only do you do all the music and everything like that, but they also do electroshock therapy and all that other stuff so you don't get atrophy and you're, you're, you're fine, you know, you so great they end up opting for the deluxe package and dude goes under needless to say nothing you know it, there's a black wall there he doesn't remember anything seven years later he gets woke up he, he there, he's he's in this he's he's in this room it's all kind of beat up the floor is all wet he has no idea what's going on there's no lights he finds this tablet and the tablet is a nurse saying oh my god aliens are invaded we're all dying the cities are all destroyed you still have cn that's what they call it the, the abbreviation cn you still have it but there's a band-aid fix if you get this syringe and stab it in the back of your neck as close to the spine as possible it'll give you 24 hours so you've got 24 hour jump windows to get from a to b this stuff has to be kept cold and so in order for you to you know so you can't keep it with you because it has to be kept really really cold otherwise it loses its potency and you'll die so please 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 you know uh if you do decide to go from a to b and meet us at this site which we can't wait for you to to wake up in order to do yeah you know you, you've got this the other way <laughs> So dude is like, oh, damn, I have no idea what's going on. Where's my fiance? Where's well, they got married just before he went under, which was weird, but whatever. Uh, so he's like, oh, damn, yeah, I got to, you know, I got to go. I got to survive for my wife, yada, yada, yada. There's like six other people and he, he injects them all with the with the stuff. He injects himself and he doesn't like needles uh, and, and he waits for him to wake up. The pe you start noticing holes right away. I at least I did. Number one, if he has a terminal disease and the aliens are killing us all anyway, why wake him up? Why wake him up for all that? I mean, they're already working at a negative. If the world is in it anyway, why would you wake up somebody that has that much of a handicap, that much of a liability? You wouldn't. No nurse or doctor or practitioner would wake you up, right? Also, after he wakes up, they literally left supplies for him. Weapons, ammo, food, supplies, all this stuff. 
if the world is 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 going up in in smoke and you need to salvage every last supply you can get you would not leave six terminal patients six or seven terminal patients with with your supplies that's ridiculous and number one if you had that many extra supplies with you why (laughs) so it doesn't make any sense right i'm thinking that the author just doesn't know what he's doing and at the time, I believe, I have not talked to the author about it. He contacted me through Reddit. I have no idea who this guy is or anything like that. I know the title of his book, his name, and I saw a picture of him on Amazon's Author Central. That's my knowledge of this guy, right? But I believe that's exactly what I was supposed to think. That's exactly what the author wanted me to believe. So it's already, it's irking me a lot. I'm like, there's no way. That doesn't make any sense. But whatever. It's a, it's a book. It's probably just not a good story. I'm going to push through. So he wakes up all the people. They're, of course, all freaking out. They are able to get out of this, uh, what's it called? They're able to get out of this hospital room. They have to climb up like an elevator shaft. And while they're doing that, they attract the attention of these aliens. And the aliens are walking around. They, they're, they're reported to be able to see, hear, and everything else like we do. They're these weird mech-looking things. But, like, these guys are using uh, glow sticks and stuff like that, chem lights, all this stuff. They're talking, they're making noise, and the aliens don't see them. They don't spot them. They don't investigate. They don't go underground looking for them. There's no real, like, search and destroy at all for these things hell-bent on our destruction. It's really frustrating to me. And I'm like, God, they're just, these are the stupidest aliens that have ever conquered Earth, right? But again... That's what the author wants you to think, I I believe. I'm not sure, but I'm getting there. So these guys have to bounce from hospital to hospital through this city because within 24 hours at night, so within like 12 hours or whatever it is, they have have to go through the cover of darkness because it gives them more uh, uh, concealment and stuff. So they have to bounce from from hospital to hospital to get another injection of the goo. Otherwise, they're going to have the CN catch them and kill them, right? So that's what they do. At night, they're going from place to place. Boom, 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 trying to get where they're trying to go. They have a few small run-ins with the aliens. They kind of see what they look like, which is just these weird mech things with plasma cannons on their arm. But they never really get into an engagement. They're, he's the, uh, the main character is really encouraged not to engage with them if he can help it. Because once you attack them, then they just like swarm in there. So it's really dangerous to attack them. Only shoot if you absolutely have to, right? So he's he's really resistant shooting and stuff like that. He gets thrust into this. Well, he he like picks up this uh, the the mantle of leader, even though he's a twenty year old nobody. Granted, he's like twenty seven, twenty eight now, but still, he's got no leadership skills, and he knows it. But he's kind of like you know doing his cape and tights thing. And the author wants you to be like, yeah, this guy's kind of a poser, but whatever. Uh, so they they get from place to place that they're going, and eventually he's he's listening to these these recordings from his wife that she left him over the years and what i what i thought was interesting was you know they're 21 years old this seven years this woman's in her prime she ain't waiting around for her carrot vegetable husband right so in the recordings she leaves him eventually he's really upset about that well just so happens convenience is convenient there's this girl ellie that's part of the group, and she looks a lot like his wife. And of course, he's very much into her. They end up kind of falling for each other. No further than kissing, it ain't that kind of book, but no further than kissing or anything, right? But it happens, and you're like, man, that's really convenient that as soon as his wife leaves him, that this chick just slides up in there, and it's really convenient that they both like each other, and that she looks just like the the wife and all this stuff. And man, this guy is, this is a garbage story. It's really convenient. That's what the author wants you to think. Trust me, I'm getting there. <laughs> so you go forward, and eventually they have uh, they reach one of these hospitals where there's not enough syringes for anybody. They're missing, like, by one. So they draw straws, and, of course, the, the girl, the love interest, is as draws a short straw. And she's like, damn, well, dude, you know, he's like, nope, chivalry. And he takes the stick away from her and starts getting ready to leave. He's like, I got to make it to the next hospital before, you know, before too long or I'm going to die. So good luck. I'll meet you guys there. And the girl who you believe is just like a, a third grade English teacher or whatever she is. She's, you know, she's in love with him. There's no way I'm letting you go alone. She comes with. So those two break off from the rest of the group, which is like four other guys. 
and they go. They they just take off in the middle of the day to or you know in the morning to, to head to this other hospital or whatever, and they make it. They make it. There's a few twists and turns, and there's some stuff that happens. And it's like what? But they they make it over there. Or anyway, I'm sorry. He makes it over there because she gets captured by the alien. She gets sucked up into one of the ships. And it's really interesting the way that happens. Again, I really want you to read this book, so I'm not I'm I'm glossing over everything. So long story short, he gets to the end, right? He's all by himself. He feels like a failure because in in all honesty, as far as he knows, he has failed. Ellie got captured, the other four guys that were with him that he was supposed to be leading all died because none of them make it. Uh, his wife has left him and now that, you know, the aliens just eating him alive. So he's literally walking in the middle of the road instead of trying to hide or anything that would be sneaky. He's just walking. He's just done. He kind of wants the aliens to come and kill him because he's, he's, he's failed. He's got nothing. He gets to the, to the main place. The aliens actually do pull up behind him. Like they're a few hundred yards behind him in their spaceship doing their weird laser light show. And they just kind of leave him alone. They don't, they don't go after him, which again, you're led to believe is super lucky and, and convenience is convenient and stuff like that. Again, this clever, evil genius author, right? <laughs> I'm getting there. So he gets to this sanctuary, right? What he thinks is a sanctuary. They let him in. They're like, he's here. He's arrived. And he's like, who the hell? How do you know who I am and stuff? What are you talking about? Like they use his name and he's like, how do you know who I am? What's going on? So they, they get up. They, they bring him in. They, they take him into this room. They, they sit him down, and this wall shifts. There's the survivors. There's all the survivors. He's on a mother effing TV show. He's on a TV show. Guys, I don't care who you are. I don't care how smart you think you are. You didn't see that coming. Shut up. I don't want to hear it. He's on a TV show. His wife... You're like, how? How is that legal? How is that legal? His wife is still alive, and before he went under, he signed a power of attorney, right? A general power of attorney. She's got all the rights to him. She signed it so that he could join because she lost her job, and they offered him a million dollars if he if he did this, whether or not the show was aired, and to take care of all of his medical treatments so that he could be woke up and they could be together, Right? So it makes sense. However, you know, he thought she was dead. He made out with the chick. <laughs> it's all bad things. It's a, so their marriage is a little rough. It it he doesn't really say anything. They go through this thing where all the producers and everybody and the and the audience members that were watching, they all kind of do their little spiel and they kind of walk you through certain things and and how everything worked and and how like the explosions and the gunfights and the abductions worked. Super clever. Super clever. Oh my god, I've never been so happy to be duped. <laughs> so, needless to say, his wife is really upset because, you know, he was set up to make up, make out with the uh, with the other chick. I don't know too many wives that would be thrilled about that. He's not thrilled about it because he feels like his wife kind of betrayed him, and you know he knows that she watched him make out with this other girl on national TV. <laughs> so <laughs> they they storm out. She runs over, grabs him by the hand, but she's not like really grabbing him. She just wants to leave because they're trying to get her to talk and everything like that. Remember that. We'll get there. So the next part of the book you get from the perspective of Ellie. That's the girl that was the love interest during Michael's, you know, run through what he thought was, you know, scorched earth, uh, whatever. It was just a five by five mile set that they had that they had set up. That was it. But you get this perspective from Ellie. Ellie, it turns out is an undercover FBI agent because the pharmaceutical company that's treating the disease and the, the, the studio company are in cahoots to make money off of this disease that they manufactured in order to do these reality shows. Thousands of people have died from this disease, right? They Basically, long story short, they created a, a nerve toxin that they were sending out to people in mailers and stuff like that to infect certain people. Those people, once they came down with it, if they could afford the treatments, great. You know, they they talked to him about maybe, you know, they they tried to, they, they scouted him to put him on the show without their knowledge. If they couldn't, they just effing died. You know, the third option, the first option is death. Thousands of people died, right? But they made 
billions off the reality shows with the celebrities going through there. It's called CRISPR uh, treatments and uh, or or just the treatments being in a coma, you know, paying for that. They made billions off of this. So the FBI got some whistleblowers in the in the two companies to start sending this information like, hey, they're doing some heinous stuff over here. So Ellie is the FBI agent that's sent in to uh, uh, investigate all that, and you find out how she got put on the team, how she got into the show, how she got teamed up with Michael, and everything that happens, right? Like why everybody's sitting there on the, uh, you know, in the in the coma patient thing when Michael woke up. Why didn't any of them have muscle atrophy? Why wasn't that convenient that everybody that survived opted for the deluxe package? Because none of the people in there, everybody that was with him was an actor. None of those people were actually patients, right? All actors. Michael was the only patient. Genius. So that's why that's why that all worked out. The supplies that they left for him, they left him because they didn't really need him. They do find those people later, but their 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 deaths are faked, and it's it's convincing. Michael buys it, but they're fine. They're there. They're they're giving interviews and stuff like that. Um, the weird stuff that he's stabbing in the back of his neck. Michael's already been cured of CN. They they cured him before they woke him up. The stuff that they're stabbing in the back of his neck is basically nanite. Uh, cameras so that people can see everything from his point of view and that's and all the people that all the different actors that were there it the reason it had to be every 24 hours is because the battery life dies and it gets flushed out of your system <laughs> it's like oh my god everything the the the, the fact that l uh is is abducted how she's abducted the fact that the aliens aren't really searching for him just enough to be menacing uh the fact that he was able to walk out in the middle of the open and the aliens left him alone all of that all of that is explained through Elle's perception. So she goes through all that. You get basically a, a quick recap of, uh, of everything that happened from Elle's perception just to fill in the blanks and to assuage everything. You were like, well, this is a huge plot hole. Nope, it was a hint. You just didn't know you were reading that kind of friggin' book because even the prologue sets you up to believe it's an alien invasion story. This author is genius. I love this guy. <laughs> I'm going to read everything he puts out. I don't care if he writes something on a napkin. I'm going to pull it out of the damn trash and read it because that might be good. Uh... He, yeah, amazing. And the last part, of course, is the is the uh, conclusion where the FBI puts everybody in jail. Uh, L goes back to her, you know, FBI life doing her other stuff, and then you get the quick Michael and Eve uh, closure where they've been through marriage counseling for a couple of years. They're doing just fine. Uh, it's a little corny. She's of course pregnant. They're expecting a little girl. Yada yada yada. The end. Great story, great story, great twist, well played, Mr. Chow, you bastard, <laughs> you evil genius. Somebody get this man a top hat, a monocle, and a black cape, because <laughs> he, he, he shouldn't be walking around in anything else. I'm sorry, he should. <laughs> he's an evil mastermind that blew mine. It, it's just unbelievable. The only complaints I have about this book are... I don't like how the how it's written uh with with the run-on sentences and the redundancies there is a lot and and an extreme amount sir with respect you need an editor uh an editor would be able to to spot that quicker than i did and fix it and i mean check them out i've got an ad on fiverr in a bunch of my videos not this particular one but i think the one previous uh if you don't want to use the one that i suggest just fine they're all all over the place and that's the only thing holding this book back the only thing because this is a magnificent story an absolutely magnificent story and even if you haven't read the book and you sat through this spoiler please go out and read it you'll love it i did i really really did and if you don't again come back and, and let's have a debate. Let's have a discussion. Tell me how I'm wrong. I would love to hear that. I would love nothing more than that. The link is in the description to find this guy's book. Please go check it out. Four and a half out of five stars. And the only reason it's not a five is because it desperately needs an editor to fix up some of the run-on sentences and redundancies. That's it. There it is. That's the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you have any comments, concerns, questions, or complaints, feel free to put them in the comment section below, and I will get back to you as quick as I can. And as always, thanks.